Dear friends, it's a great joy for me to reach out to you this day through this episode of Sublime Solutions. And I will be dealing with a very important topic, the only foundation, Jesus. Just to bang this message on a particular portion of the scripture, let me read to you 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter 10 to 14. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter 10 to 14. According to the grace of God which is given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For no other foundation can a man lay than what is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day will declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. He shall receive a reward. Dear friends, St. Paul was persecuting the church, but when Jesus met him, he became a transformed person. He began to love the word of God and he became a master builder. He says, I have laid the foundation, not that he laid the foundation of the Lord Jesus. He understood the foundation of the Lord Jesus and he says, I am building on that. He was building the church with the word of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit. He was willing to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was willing to bear in his body the suffering that is lacking in the suffering of the Lord Jesus. He was willing to suffer for the Lord. He died as a testimony. He was martyred. Look at his self-understanding before the word of God, before the foundation. 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 5th verse, he says, For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. See, when he was ministering in the church at Corinth, he had a lot of problems with those people. Just to defend the gospel, defend his calling, he is telling this particular sentence. He is telling this particular fact. I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. At the same time, he writes when he, in the first epistle he wrote to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 9, verse, For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. I tell you, he knew that he was an apostle, called by the Lord with all the miracles and all the qualifications needed for an apostle. St. Paul was an apostle, but he says, I'm least of all the apostles because I persecuted the church. If you read 1 Timothy 1 chapter 14 and 15 verses, there St. Paul says, And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Look at the, look at the self-understanding of St. Paul. He said, I am chiefest of all sinners. Look at the self-cognition, self-understanding and self-declaration. So, St. Paul as a great man of God, an apostle, he was humble. He understood why he was. He understood his own limitation. Peter was a great man of God. When you look at Matthew's Gospel, 16th chapter, verses 18 to 19. And Jesus told Peter, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus told Peter that on this rock I will build my church. Jesus was not going to build the church on Peter. He was only a small stone, Petros. He was going to build the church on Petra, the rock, he himself. Now, Peter never declared, look, I am, I am the rock. I am a big person. He never declared. He, said, I am, he never said, I am the foundation of the church. So when you look at the scriptures, these men of God never wanted to elevate themselves beyond their own capacity. They never wanted to have a title for themselves for their own glory. What do we see in this present scenario, in this ministerial realm, in this world? You know, if you are called for ministry and if you are faithfully following the Lord, if you are joining an organization, they give you ordination and you can put the reverend. That title you can put when then somebody offers it to you. When you go to your theological college and complete your PhD, if you say doctor so-and-so, there's nothing wrong in it. 
if you're able to establish seven churches, you can call yourself a bishop. But what really happens in this ministerial realm? I'm really sad about it. I'm not a novice in the ministry. I have been in the ministry for 51 years. I've seen what's happening in the ministerial realm. Some people call themselves apostle. I am apostle so-and-so. And some people call, call themselves, I am prophet, prophet so-and-so. I remember a self-acclaimed apostle, apostle so-and-so, is young and he is doing ministry. Not much of teaching is there from the word of God. He performs miracle. From India, he is able to send anointing to somebody in uh, Malaysia. They sent that. He does a lot of miracles. In one video I saw, he was holding the face of a woman at the side and he blows his breath upon her face. She collapses on the floor. He calls it uh, anointing. You know, people take a wrong cue from the word of God. If you look at John's Gospel, 20th chapter, verses 21 and 22, Jesus said to the disciples after he rose again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed upon them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now when Jesus blew his breath upon the two disciples, he was not going near their face to blow. He blew over them. He, they never fell down. If you look at the word, receive the Holy Spirit, it is about futuristic. When Jesus ascended to heaven, after 40 days, on the day of Pentecost, the anointing of the Holy Spirit came, they received the anointing. So when Jesus blew over them, they did not collapse on the floor. Some of these false prophets who call themselves as apostles, they blow the people fall down. It is unscriptural. Jesus was giving them a promise about what's going to happen in the future. Now this is what happens in the ministerial realm. People call themselves apostles. People call themselves uh, um, prophets. And many people say so-and-so foundation. They put their uh, name and say so-and-so's foundation. Are they building only on the foundation of Jesus? St. Paul says, there can be no other foundation than that is laid, that is Jesus Christ. So if they are building the ministry on, their, on themselves, it is their ministry, nothing to do with God. They are building demons' kingdom. They are not building the kingdom of God. They are building their lives. Will God approve of that? And many people call uh, the ministries are their ministry, so-and-so's ministries. It's not the ministry of God. St. Paul did not do that. So, um, I mean, John did not do that. Peter did not do that. How can, the, why should these people do? Now, are they building the ministry for the Lord or for themselves? What are they building on? Gold and also hay, wood and money. This is what they are building. Many people build their own uh, big mega um, organizations for their own benefit. It is not built upon the foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ. If I say, Rajadas Foundation, Rajadas Ministries, Apostle Rajadas, Prophet Rajadas, I will be a fool and an idiot. So dear friends, let us be humble before the Lord. St. Paul very clearly says, a day is going to come. Fire is going to come upon every everyone. Even Peter says, judgment will begin in the house of the Lord, in the church, before it comes to the people of the world. So we must tremble before God's word. There cannot be any other foundation than that is laid, the foundation of Jesus Christ. What is needed? Build on the foundation, Jesus. Foundation for individual lives. Jesus is a foundation for homes. Jesus is a foundation for churches. So, build on the word of God and sound doctrine guided by the Holy Spirit. There should be no motive for money. People who call themselves apostles and prophets and all, their attitude is entirely different. They are not caring for souls. They may preach. They may preach from the word of God. They are not caring for souls. So what is needed is longing for souls. They must be, they must be really rooted and grounded in the sound doctrine of God's word. So looking at the Old Testament, New Testament, they take some word out of context, claim many things for them, and they are in the jeopardy. I just give, you, give a warning. If you are a person who is um, claiming you to be a prophet or a bishop, or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or an apostle. If you are building your ministry on your name, your ministry, it is your ministry, it is not built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The day is going to come. Fire will check everything. Jesus is going to come as a judge. Now, what we do should be able to stand till eternity. The basic thing that are needed is we must have a life filled by the Holy Spirit, long for holiness, 
long to correct ourselves and Paul had self-cognition, self-understanding. We must be able to correct ourselves and grow in the grace of God, grow in humility. We can never ever claim anything as our own. St. Paul says, I am what I am because I am God's grace. We must have that humble attitude and do what God wants you to do. You know, in my life, when I stand and preach God's word, I am not scared about demons. I am not scared about men. I preach God's word as a man of God. When I come down the pulpit, I am nothing. When I stand on the pedestal and preach God's word, the Lord gives me his own word. He speaks through me. And when my work is over, I come down as nothing. And I am living and doing God's work so that I may fulfill what God wants to do in and through me. I never plan anything for myself. I never plan anything for myself. The Holy Spirit who is in me, He guides me. The motivation is love for souls. Through these snippets, when I reach out to people, if one soul is touched by one snippet, I'll be the happiest man. So dear friends, don't be fascinated by foundations and names and titles that people self-declared titles. It will destroy their own ministry. A day is going to come. They may escape and go into heaven, but their ministry will go into jeopardy because the fire of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to burn everything. Even gold will be burnt. Everything will be burnt. Money will be burnt. Our whole life should not be burnt. So, dear friends, we have only one life. We cannot come back from eternity and then try to do God's work again. One life, let us hand it over to the Lord. Jesus is the foundation. Let us grow our roots into him. With love, let us be rooted and grounded in love. And preach God's word with humility, longing for souls, preparing souls and preparing disciples for the extension of God's kingdom. As you know, the whole world is going through a turmoil, because of COVID-19, what is our responsibility? People are called by the name of the Lord. They should humble themselves and pray and seek his face. Withdraw themselves from every evil thing that they are doing. And when we humble ourselves before the Lord, God will have mercy upon us. I encourage all of you to spend quality time in prayer. Meditate upon God's word. Build your life, your home on Jesus, the foundation. God bless you. Amen.